Hello again and welcome back to At Home Origami where we will learn to fold origami at home. Uh, so last time we made some holiday trees. This time I figure we'll make a bird. So many of you might be familiar with the origami crane, perhaps the quintessential origami shape that uh, most people think of when they think of origami. But there's many birds that you can fold and a lot of them are a lot simpler to make than the crane itself, which we will learn later on. But this, today, we're going to be making a pelican. Or you could call it a swan, depending on how, um, how you want to make it. So, uh, without further ado, let's begin and we'll make this origami pelican. So, as always, origami needs a square sheet of paper. And in your kit, you'll find that we've included rectangular sheets of paper. Now, it's not actually difficult to turn a rectangle into a square sheet. And for this, you're just going to need a single pair of scissors. And if it helps you to do so, you can also bring a pencil to, or a pen to uh, make some dotted lines. So included in the kit, there's also a sheet of instructions that um, details two different ways to make a square out of your paper. Perhaps the easiest way that I find is to take your sheet of rectangular paper and you lay it out in front of you and then you take one corner and you fold it up onto itself to make a perfect triangle that lines up on the far edge and then you smooth it down. This way you'll notice that this edge is the edge of a perfect square. So all we have to do now to use this sheet as a square is take our pair of scissors and cut along that edge. And from there, you have a good square to use for origami. Now, another way to do it is to take a spare sheet of paper, in addition to the paper that you want to use for your folding, and you just lay it over top and line up two corners so that they're kind of perpendicular to each other here. And when you do that, this line is going to be the line that makes your square. So I just like to hold that down and then get the scissors started and just kind of cut along that edge. If it's easier for you, you can take a ruler or just the edge of the paper and draw out that line rather than holding it down like that. Either way is good. So, once you have your square, we can start making our bird. To make the bird, it's pretty simple. We're just going to start by folding our sheet of paper in half, diagonally. So we're going to turn our square into a triangle by folding it in half. And try and get these edges to line up as best as you can. They don't need to be perfect, but you do want them to be as close as possible so that you get a good shape in the end. And if you need to, you can adjust it a little bit and then recrease this edge. So once you have that middle crease in there to make a triangle, we're just going to open it back up again and turn it so that this line is facing away from us. Once you have that, we're going to take one side and just as if you were making a paper airplane, we're going to fold that edge inward. And then you crease it down and make sure that this line lines up in the middle. And it's going to turn into a kite shape once we do the same thing to the other side. And you'll find that this is a pretty common step in many origami patterns. Lots and lots of them are based on this kite shape. Once you have that kite shape, we're going to make it into a narrower kite shape by doing the same thing again. We'll bring this outside edge, fold it into the middle, crease it down smoothly and carefully so that you don't let it wander. And then you do the same thing on the other side again. Smoothly and carefully, we'll crease it down and try to make as good a point on this end as we can because this point is actually going to become the beak of the bird. Once that's done, 
where you can turn the whole thing upside down. And with it on the table, you're going to roughly find the middle point and fold it in half so that this top point goes to the shorter point. And once you do that, we're just going to crease this bottom edge down. Now you want this line to line up with the line beneath it. So if you need to, you can adjust it a little bit and then crease again. Finally, we need to fold this whole thing in half like a hot dog. Just fold it on half just like that. And once you have it folded in half, you will have a shape that looks like this. And this is going to be the body of the bird, even if you can't see it quite yet. Now we need to give them a neck. This thing on the inside of your hot dog fold is the bird's neck. And this can be the tricky part with this particular pattern. So you want to let it kind of come open. You're going to reach in about halfway and you're going to pull it out. But as you do so, you want to put your thumb down here at the bottom so that you can adjust it and then pinch it back together with the bird kind of pulling the neck out like that. Once you have it at that kind of angle, you can crease this down and I'll show you that again. So with the hot dog fold, you reach in, get underneath it with your thumb on top, pull it out, and then you're going to pinch it together with your, the thumb and your forefinger on the other hand. This is going to make the angle of the bird's neck. If you want them to be standing up taller, you can make it go further. If you want it to be aimed back, it can go further back. It's entirely up to you. Once that's all creased down, you can see this bird taking shape. But now they need a beak. So like I said, this is a pelican, and pelicans have longer beaks. So we're just going to pick a spot, maybe about halfway down this. Just fold it in half. Now if you wanted to make this a swan, you could make it a shorter beak. Like that. Because swans have shorter beaks, right? But I'm going to be making a pelican here, so I'm going to fold it in half, about halfway. And when you press down on the top of it with your index finger, you'll see that it kind of lays flat. And once it's laying flat, you can then pinch that edge in the position that you want. And it will just naturally fold into your beak. It's okay if it doesn't quite fold right. You can adjust it to make it look nice. So I'll show you that again. With the neck outstretched, you find the spot you want to fold. You fold it in half. With your index finger on top, you'll see that it kind of indents onto itself. And once it does that, just pinch it together and that'll make it stay put. So now you have a finished bird, but they don't stand up. So we need to go on either side and find this edge, this little flappy edge underneath the wing, and you fold it up. And you do that on both sides. And then you pull them back down. So these little edges will allow our birdie to stand up. And you'll notice that when you let them go, they will stay standing, and they'll also open up a bit. And uh, we have now finished our origami pelican, or our origami swan, and they look fantastic. And if you wanted to, you can decorate these. Um, you can draw feathers on the sides. You could give them eyes. You could draw out the beak. You can do whatever you like with these. Although traditional origami is usually done with just the color of the paper itself. But like with all arts, you can put your own spin on it. And that's what makes it fun. So we're going to conclude here for this time with our origami pelican. And um, check in again next month and we'll have another kit available for you with another new fun thing to make out of origami. Hope you enjoyed and we will see you another time. Thank you!